All right, well, let's hope this works now. We're going to be going over lesson 7.8 homework. Um, and the goal, if you look at here, is to apply and extend our previous understanding of multiplication and division to apply multiplication of fractions. So we're going to be able to do that today. And in fact, today we're going to actually be not solving the multiplication, but sort of assessing is it going to be less than or greater than a comparable number. So before we even start, we're going to look at some of our rules that we use when we're multiplying. So the first rule that we're going to look at, I'm going to zoom in here, is if the number that we're comparing to, if the factor that we're comparing to is less than 1, then the product is going to be less than the given number. So here's an example of what that might look like. Okay, in your example it says uh, one and one fifth times two and one sixth. And so I decide, well, is that less than or greater than or equal to two and one sixth? So this is my given number. This is the one that I'm, this is the factor that I'm comparing against. And I'm comparing it against the basis of the other factor. One fifth. Well, I know that one fifth is less than one whole, so my product is going to be less than two and one sixth. And here's why. If I were to take 2 and 1 sixth and I were to draw a model and then I were to cut that into fifths, I'm only going to keep one of those fifths. So I'm actually only going to keep part of the 2 and 1 sixth that I started with. So that's why our answer is less than. I'm only keeping part of it because I'm, it's less than one whole. Now let's look at our next example. In our next rule, it says if the factor is greater than 1. So if the fa other comparing factor is greater than 1, then the product will be greater than the given number. And I'm going to use the same numbers again because I want, to see, want you to see what that means. So if I'm using 1 fifth times 2 sixths, and I'm saying is it greater than or less than 1 fifth, well, 1 fifth is pretty small. So I'd have a model drawn into fifths, and I'm going to actually draw that 1 fifth model two times, and then the 1 fifth times 1 sixth. And so if I'm multiplying 1 fifth, times this other product, times this other factor, then my product is going to be larger than one fifth because it's greater than one whole. It's getting larger each time. And then the last rule that we look at is if the other factor is equal to one whole. So if I'm comparing the two factors, the product is going to be equal to the given number if my fraction is equal to one whole. So here's your example. Five and five fifths times two and one sixth. Let's face it, I like fifths. I like 2 and 1 6, so we're going to use that one again. Uh, and since I know that 5 fifths is equal to 1 whole, then 2 and 1 6 times 1 whole is actually equal to 2 and 1 6. I'm not really doing anything to it, I'm just leaving it the same. So now that we know those rules, let's apply it into our thinking. So let's say our number is 3 and 2 sevenths. So what is that going to look like? Um, well, first of all, the given number that I'm comparing it to is three and two sevenths, and I'm comparing it against my other factor, which is three. Well, what does three and two sevenths look like first? So here's gonna be one whole, two whole, three whole, so I've represented the three part, and now I need to represent the two sevenths. So I'm gonna draw a model again, and I'm going to divide it into sevenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm shading three of those. So there I have three and two sevenths. That is one. However, when I'm multiplying, I'm multiplying it three times. So I would actually have this number, and I would re-represent it again three times. So there's one, two, and let's just do a quick picture. Assume that that's three-sevenths, so um, that's going to be three-sevenths two times, but now I need to draw it one more time. One, two, three, and then two-sevenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and shading three of those. So this is three and two sevenths. When I'm taking this number and I'm multiplying it by three, because that number is greater than one, I'm actually getting a greater product. I went from here to here. So again, greater than one, a greater product. Okay, let's look at it now abstractly. Again, I have one and seven eighths times two and three eighths will be blank of two and three eighths. So two and three eighths is the given number that I'm starting with, the given factor. And I'm comparing it against the size of my other factor. Well, since the size of my other factor is one and seven eighths, that means I'm gonna have two and three sixths 
one time and then multiplying it again by 7 eighths. So it's actually getting larger. Again, that other factor is greater than 1, so my product is going to be greater than 2 and 3 eighths. Greater. Um, I want to look at one where it's going to be less than, so you're lucky. I'm going to actually help you with one of your homework problems. So let's look at number six. Number six says three and four ninths times five ninths. Your first two letters are MA. Three and four ninths times five ninths will be blank of three and four ninths. So again, I'm comparing. This is my given factor, and I'm comparing it against the size of my other factor. Three and four ninths times five ninths. Okay, since five ninths is less than a whole, I'm cutting it into parts, and I'm only able to keep five of those nine parts. So since it's less than one whole, I'm only keeping part of this three and four ninths. My answer is going to be less than. Again, you're looking at that other factor that you're comparing it to. Is that factor greater than that's going to make you draw more models, or is it less than one whole that's going to make you cut it into parts? Uh, good luck with your homework tonight. Your last two letters are T. H. Thank you.